Who likes a good rousing sports story? Well, who doesn't? Then let's listen to the favorite sports stories of that dean of American sports writers, Grantland Rice. Yes, everyone who loves sports has his favorite sports stories, and Grantland Rice is no exception. In his years of covering sporting events all over the world, Grantland Rice has tucked away in his memory thrilling stories about every sport. So how would you like, in fancy, to drop in on Grantland Rice and his friends at the Sportsman's Club every Saturday afternoon at this time, and hear Granny himself present one of his favorites? Sold? All right, then. Join us right now in the trophy room of the Sportsman's Club. Grab a seat near the fireplace if you can and listen. Say what you want to, but I stick to this. Man of War was the greatest of them all. Sure, he was great, but well away would have beaten him. I'd lay money on him. Well, I... You're wrong there, Bill. There never was a horse like Man of War. No. Okay, okay, I grant you. It's a matter of opinion. Now, wait a minute. Let's put it up to Grant and Wright. Say, that's an idea. Say, say, Granny... Oh, Granny. Yes, Bill? What's it about this time? <laughs> Granny, I guess you've seen every derby for the last 30 years. Set this one for us, would you? Which was the better horse, Man of War or Whirl Away? I say Man of War, Granny. And I say it's Whirl Away. Well, fellas, that's a fair-sized argument. I don't know if any of us will live long enough to settle it finally. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, uh, maybe I'd better tell you about the lady. You could decide for yourself what makes a great racehorse. Yeah. I'll settle for that, Granny. Yeah, sure. Here, let's take a seat up here near the yeah, fireplace. Come on, everybody. Yeah. Pull up. Let's listen to this. It ought to be good. Yeah. Granny, who was the lady? The lady? Well, Borden Chase wrote about her in the Saturday Evening Post, and he called his story, The Lady Was a Flop. But come along with me to the old aqueduct track on Long Island. We'll stand by the rail at the stable turn and watch the sun climb out of the east. Okay, it's morning at the track, and that's the time to see the beauties. They're all here now, Black, Bay, and Chestnut. And here, too, are the men who love the thoroughbreds. Owners, trainers, jockeys, and exercise boys. And just down the rail are two men we want to meet. One is old Pat Tully, trainer for the Whitlock stables. And next to him at the rail stands John Whitlock, the owner. And now, as a sleek filly rounds a stable turn, John Whitlock, Honest John, they call him, turns to his trainer. Yeah, that chestnut filly there, Pat. She one of our string? Her? Uh, why, yes, she is. Uh, she came down from the farm just last week. Nice looking, youngster. When does she breeze? Right now. I told Red McGivney to take her once around at a canter. He'll open her up at the three-quarter pole. What's Red McGivney doing here? Well, he came down from the farm with the filly. I've kept him here to ride her in the morning. I don't think you should have done that, Pat. But why not? You've had Red McGivney on your payroll for 20 years or more. Yes, he's been on the payroll, but not as a rider. You mean since Arab Queen boat attended and threw him? I guess that's what I'm thinking of. Well, for all that, for all of his twisted back the fall gave him, there's no better exercise boy here at Equinox. Yes, but look here, Pat. McGivney's 50 if he's a day. It's hardly fair to him. I wouldn't want to see him hurt again. He can handle himself, believe me. And what about the filly, Pat? She's a picture horse, and she's a lovely stride. Yeah, well, good looks don't win races. No, but this filly has more than good looks. Wait. There she is now at the three-quarters pole. Red's easing off on the range. Now watch her. There she goes. Will you look at her? Sure she's like a dark shadow on a sea of night. Look at her rounding the turn, tight up on the rail. And those beautiful legs sailing, just sailing. Mm, Good heavens, Pat. Look (laughs) at your watch. I'm looking, sir. I think it's crazy. And so is mine. What does yours say? Forty-six flat for the half, but but that can't be right. My watch says the same, Pat, and it's a good watch. Well, what do you think of her now? She's a racer, Pat. She may be a champion. Another Arab queen. Another Arab queen? (laughs) Don't you ever get tired of dreaming, sir? No, Pat, not that dream. Well, it's a good dream, but you'd better have a look at her. Hey, Red. Yes, Pat? Bring her up. Mr. Whitlock wants to look at her. Okay. <laughs> there now. There now, lady. Easy, girl, easy. 
proud of yourself, aren't you? And how do you do, Mr. Whitlock? Hello, Red. Well, here she is, sir. What do you think of her? Uh, she's a beauty. A uh, beauty, sir, and a lady, Mr. Whitlock. A fine lady. What do you say, Pat? No, no, no. She's good enough, I suppose. Climb down, Red, and walk her to the barn. Yes. Uh, cool her off and put her away. Careful now. You've got an important filly there, boy. Pat, do you have to tell me that? <laughs> uh, here now, here, behave yourself, will you, lady? And keep your nose out of me ear, if you please. <laughs> yeah, she likes you. Yeah. I believe you like her, too. Oh, I love her, sir. Hey, yeah, Red, uh, what do you call this filly? Don't you know her, sir? Well, I don't believe that She's I... She's registered as Arab maid. Her lines go back to the best mare ever foaled on the Whitlock Farms. You mean... You mean back to Arab Queen? That's right, sir. Well, Red, in that case, well, perhaps you'd better not... Well, I know what you're thinking, to... sir. You're... You're thinking that it was Arab Queen that threw me and gave me this crooked back of mine. And now I'm riding another of her line. Well, yes, but I suppose... Arab Queen didn't mean to throw me, Mr. Whitlock. I know she didn't. And as for this little filly here, why, she's as gentle as a lady, sir. (laughs) A fine lady. A lady? Hmm, that's not a bad name, Red. Suppose we call her that. Yeah, suppose we call her the lady. The lady instead of Arab maid? Hmm. The lady. Yes, sir, it becomes her. It suits her fine, sir. It does suit her, Mr. Whitlock. Then the lady, she is. Oh, uh, just one thing, Red, Uh, and you too, Pat. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Whitlock. When she runs, I expect her to carry my colors like a champion. Understand? I mean to run in the Tremont Stakes a week from Wednesday. And she'll win. Mark my words, both of you. The lady will win the Tremont Stakes for you, Mr. Whitlock. Won't you, lady? Good afternoon, racing fans. This is Clem McCarthy speaking to you from the Aqueduct Racecourse on Long Island. We're here this afternoon to bring you an exclusive NBC broadcast of the famous Tremont Stakes. It's a race for two-year-olds at five furlongs with $10,400 to the winner. And it looks to me as if it'll be an excellent race because some really promising youngsters are running. They're Colts and Phillies from the leading stables of America. Now, in number one stall at the starting gate is the Green Old Stables, Fast Colt Daisy On. He has shown splendid form in all three of his starts, won them all. Number two is Dark Flush, Mrs. Greg Norman's speedy black filly, who ran five furlongs only last week in 59 seconds on that stepping to town. Now, number three is a newcomer, the Whitlock Stables chestnut filly of the lady. Her name originally was Arab May, but it's been changed, and today she's making her first start as the lady. I asked her trainer, old Pat Tully, to tell me something about the filly, but all Pat would talk about was her pedigree, and I knew that already. He wouldn't tell me a word about her speed, and I can see Pat right now down there entering the saddling paddock with owner John Whitlock, and my guess, racing fans, is that they're expecting great things of the lady this afternoon. Now in number four, folks... Johnny Wilson rides Daisy on. Johnny Wilson rides Daisy on. I tell you, Mr. Whitlock, I'm glad to get the leather on the lady. Red McGivney here has been fussing with her like a mother hen with a single chick. He'll have her spoiled. <laughs> How jealous you are, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> well, Red, do you think she's ready to go? Ready to go and ready to win, Mr. Whitlock. If this jock here can stay on her back, and I mean you, Emery. Don't worry, old timer. I'll be bring your baby down to the front. Well, you'd better. Any riding instructions, Mr. Tully? Only this, son. Send her to the front and bring her home the same way. Right, sir. Well, Red McGivney, there goes your lady mm-hmm. off to the races to win herself some glory. Uh, how about you? Are you coming to the infield with me to see her run? Uh, thanks, Pat. I'd rather not. How'd you like to come up the clubhouse, Red? You're welcome. Thanks, Mr. Whitlock, but if, if you don't mind, sir, I, I think I'll just go down to the stable turn and watch the lady as she goes into the stretch. She'll be all alone then, out in front and traveling fast. Well, let's hope so, Red. Oh, I'm sure she is. Now he's back in his stall. Uh uh, wow boy, just broke out of his stall. And the lady, well, she's behaving like one, just like a lady. Now, plow boy is back in his stall again. 
And it looks from here as if they're just about ready. Steady, sit still, little jockeys. Watch it. And they're off. And easy on. Goes right to the front, the first to show. Half a length from the lead. Sweet Vixen is second. Only a neck ahead of Dark Plush. The lady is four. Now Daisy on draws clear and leads by two lengths. Then Sweet Vixen and Dark Plush. Now the lady is moving up on the outside. But it's still Daisy on. Sweet Vixen and the lady is third. Now the lady is moving up and she's going fast. She's catching Daisy on. And in the middle of the turn, it's only by a head that Daisy on is in the lead with the lady's second and Matt sack third, two lengths back with Sweet Vixen and Plowboy dropping far behind. And now there goes the lady as they round into that far turn. Daisy on tries to race with her, but she can't do it. She hasn't a chance. As they round the bend, the lady is in front by a length. Now she makes it two lengths. Racing fans, it looks to me like we're looking at another champion from the Whitlock stables. Another Arab queen. Now they're coming out of that stable turn. It's the lady in the lead by four lengths. Now by five lengths. It's the lady. Uh -uh. Uh-uh. Something's happened. The lady's shortening her stride. Chucky Emily goes to whip. But she's running wide. Something must have happened to the lady. But now, Matsack is in the lead. He's coming away. It's Matsack by a length. And Sweet Vixen's coming past. The lady is out of the race. Plowboy in the third. And it's Matsack by the length. Matsack by the length. Matsack by the length. Matsack by the Well, Pat, that wasn't so good, was it? No, it wasn't, Mr. Whitlock. I suppose we were a bit too optimistic about the lady. Yes, seems we were, but we'll know more when we talk to the jock. I can't understand why she broke at the turn. I would have sworn she had that race in her pocket. I would have, too. I'm sorry for Red. Yes, it's too bad. It's too bad when a man puts the faith in a horse that Red did and she lets him down. But uh, we'll say nothing about that. Uh, here they come now, sir. The jock and Red and the lady. <laughs> and when you look at the way she follows Red... With her nose in his ear, you might say. Emery! Yes, Mr. Tully. Pat, I'll tell you what happened. I'll no, tell no, you just no, what no, happened. Now, just a minute, Red. You'll have your say. But I saw the whole thing. I can tell you, Mr. No, Whitlock, sir. This is the way it was. Would you keep quiet, Red? Were... Quiet. I... Emery. Yes, sir. What happened on the turn? She quit. That's what happened. She quit on me. She quit calling Why, on you the turn. dirty, got some lies. That's not a... Hit him. I ain't quite. I don't care what you say. She quit on me. She's lying. I'll break your neck. I'm not lying. Beat his brains out. That's what I'll do. The lady didn't quit. It was a bad ride. That's what it was. He pulled her on the turn. You know you pulled her. I didn't pull her, Mr. Whitlock. I leave it to you, sir. I know how you feel, Red, but I don't agree with you. The boy gave her a good ride. Now, let's face the facts. But the lady didn't quit, sir. She couldn't have quit. I know her breed. All right, Red. She didn't quit. Something just went wrong. Don't get yourself all excited. We'll give her another chance when she's ready. Yes. Now, McGivney, take her back to the barn and cool her off. Thank you, Mr. Whitlock. I'm sorry, sir. Thank you, sir. She'll win next time. I promise you that. Come along now, lady. Come. Come. <laughs> She quit on me, Mr. Whitlock. That'll be enough, Emery. Now run along. All right, sir. Hmm. <clears throat> Red loves that horse, Pat. Yes. He loves that horse. And she loves him, Mr. Whitlock. was a flop. Owner John Whitlock's dream of owning a champion was blasted when the lady apparently quit on the stable turn in the Tremont Stakes at Aqueduct. To John Whitlock, that was racing, and the luck of racing. As for little Red McGivney, well, Red and the lady were inseparable. The little man with the crooked back and the chestnut fellow that wouldn't run. He slept in a stall. He ate when she ate. Picked over the carrots to get her the best. Combed out the clover and examined the hay. He washed her and dried her, hand galloped her ankles and bound them every morning. No groom set foot in the lady's stall. No helper held water for McGivney's sweetheart. Ten days and ten nights of that, and the lady was ready to run again, taut as a spring that is wound till it hums. They entered her in the archer handicap, and the day of the race again found John Whitlock down at the paddock with his trainer, Pat Tully. Yeah, you still have faith in her, Pat? The lady? Yes, I do. Why not? Our morning workouts are enough to take your breath away. 
I don't doubt that she can run, Pat, but will she run? That's the question. I think she will. Oh, uh, here she is. A beautiful creature, no doubt about that. All uh, Red. Yes, Mr. Whitlock. Easy now, lady. Easy, girl. All uh, Red, you still think we have a champion? Yes, I do, Mr. Whitlock. If you watch her today, the lady's going to win. I promise you that. Well, I'm going up to the clubhouse, right, Pat. Up. See you after the race. All right. Uh, see you after the race. Uh, Red, uh... Are you coming down to the infield with me? Well, uh, really, Pat, I'd rather not, if you don't mind. Are you going down to the stable turn? Uh, yes, Pat, that's where well, that's where she had trouble the last time. And I want to be there to get her past it this time. She's got to win this one, Pat. You get her by that turn and she will, Red. Well, I'll be seeing you after the race. They're in the stalls. They shouldn't be long in getting away. Marilyn's acting up a little bit, but now she's all right. She's back in her stall again. Look out, look out. They're all ready. It's just a, que- just a question of a few seconds. We should, and they're off. And it's a beautiful start with the lady, the Whitlock entry, first to show as Jockey Bartlett sends her away with a rush that puts her a full length ahead of Marilyn. Rumbine is third by a head, Jack Lowe is fourth, then it's Sunman with Dominus a length to the good over Kara and split time. Now Marilyn is driving hard in the back stretch, but there goes the lady. It's the lady drawing away from Marilyn. Now Jack Lowe makes his bid on the outside. He tries hard, but it's no use. He can't get up there. It's the lady by two lengths as they go into the far turn. And and she's opening up that space with every leap. But remember, it was the same story with the lady her last out. And now they're rounding that bend. And it was right here that the lady faltered in her last race. And ladies and gentlemen, she's done it again. There she goes to the outside. The lady in trouble. Jockey Bartlett goes to his whip. But the lady is stopping and racing very wide. She's out of the running. And now it's Sun Man by a head. Jack Lowe is second coming strong from the Pat, I guess that's the story. Yes, I'm afraid it is. I guess the lady just doesn't have it. It's a shame. But there's no escaping the facts. Well, Pat, Mr. Whitlock, sir, I, I know what you're both thinking, but it's not so. The lady was bumped. She was roughed on that turn. Uh, it's no use, Red. Bartlett gave her a fine ride. You know that. But I tell you, she didn't quit. It's not in her to quit. Red, I'm afraid Pat's right. Let's forget about it. The lady's had her chance. And, and no, sir... Now, what happens to her? Oh, we'll ship her back to the farm, I suppose. Oh, but you can't do that. The lady was born to run. It'll kill her to leave the track, Mr. Whitlock. I'm sorry, Red, but there's nothing else for me to do. After all, I'm rather proud of my colors, and I won't have a horse carrying them around that, uh... Well, you understand, Red. Yes, I understand, sir. But if you'll just give the lady one more chance, she'll carry your colors and make you proud no, of her. No, no, Red. The lady's had her chance. Wouldn't be fair to you or Pat or to the lady herself to let her run again. Well, uh, Mr. Whitlock, sir, would you sell her? Uh, sell her to me? Sell her? Why, Red, you know I don't sell my horses. Not even to me, sir. You really want to buy the lady? Yes, I do. Why, oh, I, I know she's worth far more than I could ever pay, but I've got a few dollars, two hundred dollars to be exact... And if you'll take that as a down payment, I swear you'll get the rest. Every, every, any price you name, sir. You'd give your last $200 for the lady? I'd give a thousand times that if I had it. Hmm. All right, Red, you've bought a horse. It might seem strange to some people that a man would give his last penny for the privilege of taking care of a horse. But Red was one of those to whom such an action was just as natural as breathing. But there's no getting around the fact that Red was broke, and the lady's record as a racer wasn't worth a nickel. Then came the last day at Aqueduct. Get away day, they call it. The day when the stables move on to the next meet. And here at Aqueduct on Get away day, John Whitlock talks with his trainer, Pat Tully. 
down behind uh, the, the barns there, where the big bands are waiting. Yeah, we all loaded, Pat? Uh, just one more band. We'll be gone in 20 minutes. Oh, uh, by the way, have you seen Red McGivney lately? Every morning. He's up at sunrise to work the lady. Well, where in the world is he stable? Uh, down in that last barn, the two-end stalls. He scrubbed them and rubbed them and painted them green. Put the lady in one and himself in the other with the hay and the grain. Where does he get the money to buy feed, Pat? He must be flat broke. Well, broke or not, Red will see that the lady eats. Oh, it's that way. Yeah, it's that way. But it's no discredit to steal for your horse. To steal for yourself, well, that's quite different. Better to starve than be a thief. But if you must take to feed your horse, you can take and still hold your head high. What's Red going to do now? There'll be nothing to take here at an empty track. That's true, sir. Hmm. Say, uh... He'd like to be going to Saratoga, wouldn't he? Yes, he would. Hmm. There's no room in our vans for the lady unless they... Oh, Pat, uh, weren't you telling me that two of our mares were down with coughs? Why, no, I... <laughs> well, yeah, yes, yes, sir. I, I was telling you something of the sort. Uh... Well, uh, don't you think it would be wise to leave them here, Pat? Oh. Yeah, yes, sir. I, I think it'd be very wise indeed, uh... Uh, hey there, you Tom. Yeah? Don't load those two mares that are coughing. They're staying here. Coughing? We ain't got any mares that are coughing, Pat. Will you do what you told, man? Leave Penny and Bright One behind. Okay. Leave Penny and Bright One behind. Okay. I tell you, Mr. Whitlock, if I didn't keep my eyes open, those apes would have every horse in the barn sick. Yes. Man has to be careful, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> And so, you know, there just happened to be room for an extra horse in the Whitlock van that left Aqueduct for Saratoga. And by sheer coincidence, of course, Red McGivney happened to hear about it. And later, at Saratoga... Mr. Tully, we got those two mares from Aqueduct here. All right, Joe, get them off and put them in number four barn. Okay, sir. (laughs) Better turn your head, Mr. Whitlock. I wouldn't want you to know that the lady stole a ride in your van. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Red McGivney stole a ride, too. Yeah, so he did. And will you look at him? He's in rags, poor fellow. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, Red. Oh, hello, Pat. Oh, hello, Mr. Whitlock, sir. Hello, Red. There was room in your van for the lady, and I, I didn't think you'd mind. Why, I don't mind at all. Tell me, are you going to enter her here at Saratoga? Yes, I am, sir. Oh, what have you picked for her, Red? She goes in the Saratoga Special. Special? Red, are you mad? The pick of the country's two-year-old will be in that race. I've entered Mr. Whitlock's sandfire. It's a spot for champions, Red. Champions only. Then it's a spot for the lady. Have you got a rider? I'm I'm going to ride her myself, sir. Oh, you can't do that, Red. Of course you can't. Why, man, she'd tear you out of the saddle before she's gone a dozen strides. You don't have the strength in your arms or your back to hold a two-year-old in a race. I can do it, Pat. You've seen me breeze the lady. But, man, there's a whole world's difference between a breeze and a race. To race her and guide her and hold her head when she's crowded and fighting. Oh, Red, you can't do it, and you know you can't. Oh, this won't be a race, Pat. The lady will breeze home in front and with me on her back. Red, I, I wish you wouldn't. I think his mind's about made up, Pat. Uh, Red, yes, sir. you'll need silks, won't you? I... I've saved my old ones from Sheepshead Bay, Mr. Whitlock. I, I changed the colors a bit, and they're registered properly. I suppose you're down to wait. <laughs> yes, sir. I, <laughs> you might say I've been dying. Red, listen to me. Get a boy to ride the lady. No, Pat, I'm sorry. Uh, Red, you'll need money for the entry fee. Uh, no, sir, I, I, I've managed that. But thanks to you both, you, you've done enough for me already. back memories to many of you. It's the name of Timothy James McGivney. Yes, sir, Red McGivney, the old-timer. He was once as fine a jockey as ever sat on a horse. Well, Red's up here at Saratoga as owner, trainer, and, yes, jockey. He is to ride the lady, who will have number five post position. Many of you racing fans will recall that the lady was formerly owned by John Whitlock. Well, now Red McGivney owns the lady, and he trains her. And, well, Red and the lady are in pretty fast company today, but anyhow, we all wish him good luck. 
Now it looks like they're just about ready over there at that post. Look out, and they're off. It's a beautiful start, and the lady is the first to show. Yes, Chucky Red McGivney steps her right to the front into a lead of two lengths. It's the lady first, Sandfire second, with Steel Trainer third, a length away. Hero King and Bonnet are head and head. Green Glint is bringing up the rear. Now, so far, it's all the lady, and she's widening her lead just a little with every stride. A length, two lengths. And now, as they go into that far bend, she makes it three lengths. Sandfire is driving hard to catch her, but he's not gaining any ground, and as they round the turn, it's still the lady, all by herself. But racing fans, this is a part of any race course where we have to watch for the lady. She's come charging around this last turn before, and every time she quit cold, and here's just about the spot, we're watching her, eyes for nothing but the lady. Well, the lady is not stopping the day. She's not running wide. Red McGivney is holding her to the rail, and the lady is still running like music that's sweet to the ears. She's running alone, four lengths in front. Did I say running? Why, racing fans, the lady is flying, flying with old Red McGivney, looking over his shoulder, looking for other horses. There's no doubt about it. The lady is home. The lady wins the Saratoga Scotcher. <laughs> Thank you, lady. I knew you'd do it. I, I just knew it. Red. Uh, hello, Pat. Hello, Mr. Whitlock. Oh, that that was a fine ride. ride. <laughs> but how'd you get her past that turn? I rode her past, Pat. I rode her past. That's all I did. But why in the world did she always quit there before? Yes, Red, explain that. She never quit before. It's not in her to quit. Then why did... It was me. It was me sitting there at the stable turn those other times that made her stop. Oh, I knew the lady loved me, but not that much. Red, you don't mean to say that the lady stopped running when she saw you sitting there at the stable turn? That's just what I do say, sir. She wanted to come to me. I, I wasn't sure until I put another boy out her at Aqueduct one morning. And she did the same thing. She threw him, broke clear across, and ran to me. Uh, you were sure of it then? No, no, not certain, Pat. It took this race to prove it. Yeah, uh, Red, I don't suppose you'd care to sell the lady? Oh, yes, I would, sir. To the right man. Name your own price. Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars? Yeah, don't be foolish, Red. She'll win two hundred thousand. Two hundred dollars? That's what I paid for her? Will you take her, Mr. Whitlock? She really belongs to you. Well? Oh, yes, I'll take her, Red. On one condition. Huh? That you come with her. Will you come, Red? <laughs> oh, no, no, lady. Quiet, will you? You know what I'm going to say. Sure, I'll go. I'll go wherever you go. Well, gentlemen... That's Borden Chase's Saturday Evening Post story of the lady, a gallant lady who won for a little man with a twisted back and a warm, straight heart. Now, fellas, I've got to be getting along. But I'll drop in the club next week as usual and spin another yarn for you. It's a football story and a timely one, too, with the bowl games coming along. That's right. Well, so long, everybody. So long. So long. long. It's a swell story. So long. Getting back to Man of War, I still say he was the greatest horse ever to set foot on a track. And I say whirl away. I still say whirl away. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be the sportsman's club without an argument, and they go on and on. But anyway, don't forget that you've got a date with the Dean of American Sports Writers at the Sportsman's Club next week at this same time. So be on hand and be on time for the favorite sports stories of Grantland Rice. Our cast today included Jimmy Tanzi as Red McGivney, John Connery played Pat Tully, Rod Hendrickson was John Whitlock, and Clem McCarthy and Grantland Rice appeared in person. The music was arranged and played by Gordon Seaman, and the entire production was under the direction of Tony Leader.
Remember, next week, same time, join us at the Sportsman's Club for the favorite sports stories of Grantland Rice, which come to you from New York. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>